I can't even begin to tell you how much I love to hunt. And I have so much respect for the animals that I hunt that I want to make for sure that myself and my bow are dialed in to ensure a quick and clean kill for the animal. So it's important that I practice each and every year and run hundreds of arrows through my bow. And this hunt is no different. So the first thing I do before I even go out is to make sure that my bow is still dialed in. I've been going down to this small cattle ranch in New Mexico for three years now, and I'm really hoping that I can fill my tag this year. And as much as I want to spot and stock a mule deer, the terrain has a pretty low profile and is virtually impossible for a spot and stock. So with the two years of previous research and a pretty decent pattern on these animals already, I knew exactly what needed to be done. And we've got a lot of work to do, and we're already burning daylight. My goal was to build several ground blinds on the edges of some good transitional points that I'd taken note of in the previous years I'd hunted, and based off of where I was finding most of the mule deer activity. But my main focus was on this one water hole. This is one of the only water holes in the area, and the edges of it were absolutely lined with mule deer tracks. We still need to build a blind on it, however, and luckily for me, the same farmer that was letting me hunt his ranch was also the same farmer that was nice enough to give me the keys to his hay truck. So, away we went. We've still got one more blind to build, and I'm hoping to squeeze in a hunt this evening, and we're still burning daylight. Our hay bale setup was perfect, as most of the mule deer in the area were coming to that water hole. The problem, though, was that they were all showing up after dark. We had glassed up a good buck the first night we were there, but unfortunately he was in a unit that we couldn't hunt. But as soon as he crossed that highway, we literally sat on this deer every day for the next several days and watched his every move. We knew for a fact that he was showing up at our water hole, but it was always after dark. And unfortunately, we weren't the only ones who knew about this deer, as the private cattle ranch we were hunting bordered some public ground. Needless to say, we were still going to stay after it in hopes that something would work out. Well, the buck we've been watching, the deer we call Forks, um, well, we've been watching this deer constantly the last several days and there's just really not any opportunity to spot and stalk this deer i mean it's going to take the absolutely perfect spot to uh get on him it's just there's a lot of low terrain out here and not not the conditions to spot and stalk but there there are a few little places to where you could get it done and right now is one of them and he's bedded down he's got nine does with him but he is in the backside too, which is perfect um, as far as where he could be. So he would be the first deer that we would encounter if we get this done. It's one of those things though, if we bust him, he's gonna run to the other side of the highway and, and that's the other unit we can't hunt. So this we could be putting all our chips in one basket here. Either we kill him and we're heroes or we bump him across the highway and we're zeros and then we're done because this is about the only deer we've got to go after right now. So do you take the chance and blow him out, or do you let him set and maybe hunt him the rest of the week? He's definitely in a good spot to spot and stalk him. 
there's a little ridge there that they cannot see past that I think we could come up over and the wind is perfect I say we do it I'm gonna get a range on him here and drop a pin to try to figure out exactly where he's at so when we're stalking him we know where we're at I'm gonna range him here After watching this deer for the last several days, we knew that this buck or any one of his nine does could get up from their bed at any minute to start feeding again. So we were in a race against time and in a mad dash to get down in there before they could make their next move. We had to be fast, but we also had to be careful, pulling out our binos every 20 yards or so to try and locate him again to make sure that we didn't bump him. Once we found him though, now it's just a matter of creeping in within bow range and hopefully not get busted. Thank you, Jesus. I don't even believe it happened. I mean, uh, look at my hand, dude. I don't even know what to say. It's better to be lucky than good. And put in the time. Persistence, it seems persistence will eventually pay off. Uh, this isn't even the deer that we thought it was. At the end of the day, we got a freaking mule deer down, and I'm freaking jacked. I couldn't be any more happy. Thank you, God, because it, yeah, it was phenomenal. Ted, I cannot thank you enough. Ted, oh, you've been so freaking gracious, man. Thank you for letting me hunt your land. I cannot thank you enough. This is a guy, this is a farmer down here. Both Ted and Chris let me hunt their, their ranches. And uh, we're on Ted's place. But both Ted and Chris let me hunt their places. And I uh, get a private landowner tag. 
come down here on a do-it-yourself hunt and spot and stalk within 16 yards. I spot and stalk him, crawl within 16 yards. There's that kicker I was telling you about. Crawl within 16 yards, this sucker stood up, grunted at him like a white tail. He stood up and I just smoked him. Absolutely stud New Mexico mule deer. I couldn't be any happier. He's got some brow tines. He's got good mass down here for bases. <sighs> I couldn't be any happier. Look at this stud. Look at those fronts. Just an absolute stud New Mexico mule deer. Well, we're going to lay him down here. We're going to put a tag on him. And we're going to get him out. And that's going to wrap up the story.